Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the daily current affairs analysis of 17th May 2024. And in this video, we are going to discuss the important news article from Hindu newspaper as well as Indian Express newspaper. Along with that, previous year's questions are also going to be discussed. Let's get into the discussion of this. The first news article talks about PMLA. PMLA stands for Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. And let's see what exactly this news article is talking about. Here it has been mentioned that Supreme Court has limited the ED's power that is in, uh, enforcement directorate's power to arrest PMLA accused here. So Supreme Court has made an observation. Supreme Court has told that see uh, if you want to arrest a person especially under PMLA charges that prevention of money laundering charges then you have to get consent of a court. This consent is mandatory if you want to arrest a person under PMLA and especially this is told to the enforcement directorate so usually what happens enforcement directorate if it finds that particular person is involved in money laundering activity or corruption activity then what happens it gives summons to that person so that person has to appear in front of enforcement directorate and enforcement directorate this is going to put that case in front of judiciary and if judiciary finds that all the points uh, all the arguments given by enforcement directorate is the directorate is true then it is going to give permission for the arrest but without the consent ed cannot arrest a person this is the uh, basic thing everyone should understand and here court has made it made it very clear that see uh, personal liberty is utmost personal liberty is fundamental right of our constitution so nobody can compromise with the fundamental rights so if the arrest ha has to happen it has to uh, it has to take consent of uh, judiciary so this clarification has given from supreme court here with respect to arrest with respect to enforcement directorate here so this is the news this is the news that is mentioned in this news article but what i am going to do is i am going to give the background information also with respect to prevention of money laundering act of 2000 see uh, india has ratified one international convention that is vienna convention and this vienna convention directly deals with uh, money laundering cases and it directly deals with the aspect of uh, the terror funding so the if a country ratify these kind of international conventions so there is a mandatory clause is there so at domestic level these countries they have to form a rules and regulation they have to form a law so in order to, in order to give effectiveness to this vienna convention india has passed prevention of money laundering act in the year of 2002 mainly to uh, deal with money laundering aspect in our country and this is a criminal law this is not a civil law this is a criminal law mainly deals with money laundering aspect and another property another aspect you need to remember with respect to pmla is if a person has been accused then ed can confiscate the confiscate the property of that person also this is another provision you need to remember here and this provision uh, the, sorry this particular act it is applicable on all financial institution including rbi also in our country we have mutual funds we have uh, uh, listed companies stock market insurance companies financial intermediaries uh, broker agencies all these financial institutions come under the ambit of pmla many a times what happens even these kind of organizations are also used to uh, launder the uh, used to do the money laundering activities so all these uh, agencies come under the ambit of pmla act here and who is going to enforce this uh, money laundering act in our country the agency's enforcement directorate enforcement directorate has that authority of implementing prevention of money laundering act and even to some extent cba can also uh, go for a provisions for implementation of uh, prevention of money laundering act in our country so main on the whole primary control is with enforcement directorate here and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2021 discuss how emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering elaborate the measures to tackle problem of money laundering both at national level as well as the international levels and this is it with respect to this article let's move to the next article next article is regarding ukraine here uh, the news is that next month uh, in the month of june the international conference is going to happen and this conference is called ukraine peace conference so ukraine peace conference is going to happen and where exactly this is going to happen in switzerland so uh, the finance minister of switzerland he is visiting india and he is inviting india to attend this ukraine peace conference here this is the news but before getting into the discussion of news let's see the geographical aspect of ukraine also ukraine you can see here and the neighboring countries include russia belarus poland slovakia hungary 
romania and moldova these are the uh, countries which are neighboring ukraine and here we have a black sea here and this is the crimea this is under the control of russia now now let's foc focus on the content of this news article uh, new, uh, news article says that ahead of ukraine peace conference swiss diplomat to hold talks in india now the question is india is it is not a european continent this altercation is happening in the eurasian region this altercation between ukraine and russia and india is not a stakeholder here but still why european countries want participation of india that is the question mark here the main reason here is see from almost one and a half years almost most of the european countries uh, canada america north american countries they have tried to solve this particular issues even for that matter usa put sanctions on russia also uh, there was economic steps uh, taken against the US, russia and there were geopolitical steps taken against the russia and russia's bilateral relationships were also impacted so they tried all these things but they could not able to find a solution for ukraine and russia altercation here now they want the peacemakers here they want those countries which they can convince russia here see russia is in good terms with very few countries and uh, two important countries are one is uh, china and the second one is india these two countries i china and india we have that flexibility we can talk to the russia and some of western countries believe that european countries believe that india and china they have that capability to convince russia here see china is out of the order now because china is it is not pro west china there is kind of uh, uh, bitterness between western countries and china usa is not in favor of china so it is very difficult for china to especially for western countries to convince china to act as a peacemaker between russia and uh, ukraine here so the only option they are left with is india here so india has to play active role here this is what they are expecting because whatever they have tried it did not give results it did not work now they are expecting india to ro india to play an active role in this uh, aspect of russia ukraine but what india told I, uh, this global ukraine peace conference invitation has come to india but india see we are not a stakeholders neither we are in that geographical locations and neither it does not affect us directly yeah indirectly it is it is going to affect india it is going to impact india for that matter for entire world but we are not the direct stakeholders here india want to maintain that neutral positions here see we don't want to be the enemy of any country here obviously if we find ourselves as a very much pro china the, sorry pro russia then it is going to give a bad signal with respect to western countries also and if we move towards the western side then this is going to give a pro west image in the eyes of russia and in the eyes of global south also so india has to maintain that neutral order here so that is why india is very skeptical to attend this particular conference here and many of the diplomatic sources they are telling that see india has that reputation now even if you look at the g20 where russia was supporting delhi declaration and even in the brics brics summit we have a very cordial relation with russia so india has that influential position at the international arena now and in uh, now european countries and the western countries they want to take that influential voice and they want to take that advantage of india to deal with this issue see china is intelligently told that see we are not going to attend this particular uh, summit here and whatever the solution comes both the parties both russia as well as the ukraine they should accept if both the parties accept then only the solution is viable if uh, ukraine accept the solution russia does not accept the solution if some solution is acceptable to russia but it does it is not acceptable to ukraine then it does not make sense and this is what china is telling and india is also taking a similar stand india is also telling the same thing whatever the solution you take it should be acceptable to both the stakeholders both the countries here and india is very clearly want to take a step back very clearly want to maintain that neutral position the diplomatically neutral position with respect to russia and ukraine conflict here and this is what this article is talking about somewhere uh, the uh, switzerland foreign minister he is visiting india and he is inviting india to attend it india is very skeptical it has not confirmed that they are going to attend it india is giving the reason that see uh, till june 4th india will be busy because elections are going on after that results will come then the new government has to be formed so india is not committing to attend the global ukraine peace conference so this is what this article is talking about and uh, let's from the geopolitical perspective yes this article becomes important but just understand why uh, these uh, western countries want india to be a part of this 
uh, Russia Ukraine process here. See another aspect here. See they are going with uh, global Ukraine peace conference, but they have not even invited Russia. And Russia actually it uh, give a signal that we are not going to attend it. So how are they going to find a solution when the major stakeholders, uh, one among the major stakeholders, Russia is itself is not part of this conference. So this is going to be a tricky factor here. Anyhow, let us understand from a geographical perspective. Let us understand from an India's point of view. So that would be sufficient here. And let's see previous year question on this particular topic. Question is based on geography perspective. In the last prelim, this particular question was asked, how many of above mentioned countries share land border with Ukraine? Uh, six countries have been mentioned and you need to find how, how many of these countries share a land boundary. And uh, Hungary, it shares a boundary with uh, Ukraine and uh, I think it uh, it is Romania. Here you can see, yes, Romania and Hungary. These two countries, they share a land boundary here. And answer is only two. First answer A is the right option here and let's move to the next topic. The next topic is regarding political parties. Let's see the article first and what this article is talking about. Can parties be de-recognized or de-registered? This is the question and let's see what exactly this article is trying to say here. Let's start with the discussion. See, uh, if you look at the political parties, there are mainly three types of political parties in our country. One is national political national parties, the second type comes state parties and the third comes recognized parties. These are the primarily three types of parties. National parties, uh, there are six national parties in our country and there are 61 state parties in our country. There, there are some criteria. Uh, go through with that also from the polity perspective that they have to get uh, the I think they have to get six percent of vote share and they have to recognize as a, a state parties in four states and they have to get certain number of seats as well some criteria is there and even for the state uh, political parties also some criteria is there and for recognized party those parties neither they are national or the state parties national state parties you need to have a sizable very sizable uh, uh, vote. Uh, chunk is there, vote, voting turnout should be there with respect to your party. But those recognized parties, these are the parties which get 1% vote share, 2% vote share, constantly they are getting this per percent vote share. These are considered as a recognized political parties. They are not very recognized or a very established political party, but they have a significant role to play with respect to elections. So these are all three important types of political parties are there in our country. And the requirements for these parties are mentioned in Representation of People's Act 1951 and especially Section 29A of Representation of People Act of 1951. And see, the first and foremost criteria whenever you want to register yourself as a political party, what do you have to do? You have to go to the Election Commission of India and you have to give a memorandum. And in this memorandum, you have to say that we are going to follow the constitution. We are going to follow the constitutional ethos. We have to follow the constitutional value, the socialism, secularism, democracy, republic, everything we are going to subscribe it and we, we follow and we obey the constitution of India. This memorandum, they have to give election commission of India. This is the first step. After the election is conducted, according to the vote share, according to the seat share, the parties are going to get the status, whether it is a national party, state party or a recognized political party. So this is the basic understanding regarding uh, political parties in our country here. Let's move ahead and let's see what are the ad uh, advantages to register yourself as a political party and what uh, uh, benefits these political parties get. The three important aspects has been mentioned in this article. The first and foremost thing is whenever you register as a political party, you can get a donation from a people. So usually people donate to a political party. Whenever they donate money to a political party, there is a tax exemption. The political parties are not supposed to pay income tax here. So there is a tax ex exemption. This is one aspect and the second aspect is political parties are going to get a certain symbol for national political party. They can use the party symbol throughout the country and for state political parties, they can use the uh, symbols in the throughout the state and for unrecognized political party symbol will be given according to the free symbol and they can use it within the state. So these are the, this is the second advantage and the third advantage is star campaigners for national state political parties, they can hire up to 40, they can uh, declare up to 40 uh, state camp star campaigners and for unrecognized parties sorry recognized parties there are 20 star campaigners this 40 is for national parties and the state level 
parties and 20 star campaigns is for a recognized political parties so th these are three important aspects here and according to election commission of india in our country we have 2790 active registered political parties in our country out of this 2790 only six are national parties national parties include uh, bjp and uh, congress these are the national cpi these are the communist party these are the national parties and there are 61 state political parties are there so and if you look at rest of them the rest of them belong belongs to the recognized political parties the small small very small political parties now the issue here is the author is focusing on some uh, these recognized registered political parties so what is happening so many parties they have registered uh, in the election commission of india but they are not even contesting elections here then you can ask the question so what is the problem with that it is up to that particular party if they want to contest an election or not if they want to support some other country it is so it is up to their discretion you can argue this argument but the thing is they are even though they are not election uh, contesting election uh, in the in an election process electoral process but the thing is they are receiving donations very regularly so what author is trying to do is most of these political parties they are doing a money laundering here so because there is no income tax whatever the donation you receive and these political parties they are not contesting elections but they are receiving the donation and they are doing a money laundering activity they are doing the corruption activity with respect to money so how do you address this problem this is this is the gist of this article how do you address this one thing is election commission of india should deregister these polit political parties should remove these political parties it should not grant recognition to these political parties by doing this we can uh, deal with aspect of money laundering activities of political parties now the question is does election commission of india does it has power to deregister or derecognize a political party see Re representation of people act rpa 1951 it mainly talks about registration of political party it does not mentions about deregistration of political party and this aspect has sorry has been misused by polit indian political parties here who are involved in money laundering activity and another important aspect is even election commission of india knows that it is also aware that they are doing money laundering activity they are misusing the tax exemptions given by uh, election commission or given by the representation of people act here so even election commission of india it has given the list of electoral reforms uh, they have told their requested government that these electoral reforms have to be uh, implemented and this electoral reforms uh, memorandum was given in 2016 only even at that time only election commission of india it has mentioned that election commission of india should get the power to deregister political parties also and even law commission also in 2015 even under the report of electoral reforms it also mentioned that a deregistration of political parties should happen if any political parties does not contest elections for 10 years if 10 years no election has been contested by political party then that political party should be deregistered it is not considered as a political party this suggestion is given by law commission so both election commission of india as well as the law commission they have supported deregistration or derecognition of a political parties in our country so this is what uh, author is trying to say that give that empower the election commission of india see uh, till what extent election commission go at this point of time usually what happens if a, a candidate if he is not following the model code of conduct then he can be suspended for few days if political party is not following the model code of conduct that political parties can suspend it for few days maximum that is it and for uh, constantly violating and severely objecting the electoral process only at the extreme situation uh, po political parties can be deregistered and this is the reason only at the extreme violation of rules and regulations here under the till not till after independence only once one political party has been de uh, recognition has been cancelled in 2005 in jammu and kashmir national people's party has been suspended for failure of instruction given by e election commission of india especially with respect to model code of conduct time and again they were violating for that reason uh, deregistration has been uh, done with respect to national people's party only once it has been done it means that only at the extreme situation extreme situation you can de recognize or deregister parties but 
what about these those parties which are doing money laundering activity there are no actions but author is trying to say that we need to empower election commission of india make sure that these kind of political parties are derecognized from the list of political parties and this is what author is trying to say here and let's see the previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2020 there is a need for simplification of procedure for disqualification of persons found guilty of corrupt practices under representation of people act comment and let's move to the next news the next news is regarding right to property there are so many articles today with respect to polity from the politic perspectives and one more it is there right to property and here also supreme court of india it has made a observation and this observation is with respect to right to property and what exactly the observation is see right to property right to private property this is a constitutional right here initially this was under article 31 this was a fundamental right later it was changed into a fundamental right to a constitutional right uh, this was removed and the new article was introduced in the article as article 30a and it has made one among the constitutional rights right to private property and what was the reason to remain uh, removed from the fundamental rights see it was removed in the 1978 see if it's a fundamental right it gets more power you can directly contest your cases in high court and supreme court so usually if government want to uh, uh, take up some properties especially for some projects or some railway projects or some infrastructural projects people used to go to the court people used to file a petition that our personal liberty our fundamental right has been impacted due to the state action so these kind of cases used to be uh, very regular in judiciary and it was directly uh, uh, objecting the state's development it, is, it was directly objecting the infrastructural uh, development also in the country so for that reason government has taken a decision that let us make it as a constitutional or, re or a legal right not as a fundamental right as long as this right to property is a fundamental right it is definitely going to impact the india's development it is very it would be very difficult to uh, acquire a land it is very it would be very difficult even to go for a road expansion also it was that difficult the rules were very strict at that point of time so that is the reason in 1978 from article 31st it has been changed to article 300 and a right to private property now supreme court has mentioned that see this right to property this is a constitutional right under article 300 a. along with that this is also a human right also so bench of justice justices they, they have given opinion with respect to right to private property here see if a government uh, if a state is acquiring any property it is taking over any property for public purposes then it is mandatory on government they have to give proper compensation to a person or else this is going to be considered as violation of constitutional values in our country and this right to property it is not only that just to hold a property even it is my right that i can sell my property or i can give it to some other person so everything comes under this ambit of right to private property it means i can hold the property and it is my discretion i can sell my property or i can pass it on to some other person so this comes under the ambit of right to property so uh, the supreme sorry the judges observation you have analyzed that is it is a constitutional right as well as a human right this is what they told and they also made it very clear that the arbitrary takeover this is not going to happen and even government can say that this is for a public purposes this is for building a, a hospital building a school or a building a railway uh, line road extension whatever it is you have to give a proper compensation to that person so these are the two uh, aspects have been mentioned in this news article and uh, right to private property i had given the explanation also initially this was under article 31 as a fundamental right later it has been removed and it has mentioned under article 300e so for that amendment two changes had to be done it has to remove article 31 and also article 191 f this also was amended to change it from a fundamental right to a legal or a constitutional right here and this was done in the 44th amendment of constitution in 1978 remember these aspects there's a pure factual concepts here just remember just go through with this uh, content ones and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2018 question is what is the position of right to property in india four options have been given i'll go to the direct answer here legal right available to any person and let's move to the next news see this is a very tricky question uh, legal right available to citizens only 
and fundamental rights available to citizen only fundamental definitely it is not a fundamental right this you can eliminate neither fundamental right nor this is also so these two are kind of tricky one here this is a legal right available to any person here it is not only for the citizen it's available to any person and let's move to the next news the next news is regarding west nile virus here and kerala the number of cases it is rising here so it has given a warning and also even in the neighboring states including karnataka and tamil nadu they were also very conscious regarding west nile virus so let me give you guys background information regarding west nile virus and yes there are there were questions have been asked based on these uh, these kind of uh, topics also there was one question with respect to zika virus and with respect to covid there was question in mains and with respect to ebola there were questions if you look at the previous year's mains question so time and again questions have come on these kind of topics also so west nile virus this is a flavi virus flavi virus it means that it is a single stranded rna virus and this is directly responsible for causing japanese encephalitis yellow fever and west nile virus fever also and this is a mosquito borne disease it means that mosquito is a vector here usually birds they are the reserve reserve they are considered as a reservoirs of west nile viruses whenever mosquito bites uh, uh, this bird this virus is going to enter the mosquito body and this acts as a vector and this virus is going to transmit to the human beings or the animals whenever mosquito bites human beings on the animals here so this is how the transmission happens bird is the host it is a reservoir and vector is a mosquito and it is going to impact the humans and the animals also and the mosquito the vectors the one particular species is responsible that is culex species with respect to dengue and with respect to chikungunya we have a aedes mosquitoes this group of mosquito they are responsible and with respect to west nile virus these are the culex species of mosquito they are these are the responsible here and how exactly this is going to transmit here see uh, in a casual way it is not going to transmit from one person to another person that is eliminated either if there is a blood transfusion or if there is a infected mother give birth to the baby then the virus is going to be transmitted or the exchange of bodily fluids at this this kind of situations where we can see transfer of virus from one person to another person just in a casual contact as a casual way there is no cases have been reported where there is a human to human transmission has been happened here and what are the uh, symptoms just like flu symptoms headache fever fatigue body ache, body aches swollen gland these are the regular things but one aspect you need to remember uh, west nile virus is see it directly affects the neurological aspects especially it damages see whatever the damage it causes to neurological aspects these nervous damage these can last forever this is going to last in the body for very long time this is the major concern with respect to west nile uh, virus west nile encephalitis so this aspect you need to remember with respect to this it is going to affect the neurological aspects of the body and whatever the nervous system damage happens this is going to last forever so this is the information regarding west nile virus here and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2017 two statements have been given and you need to find the right statement the first statement in tropical regions zika virus disease is transmitted by same mosquito that transmits dengue and the second sexual transmission of zika virus disease is possible yes both one and two is the right option here and let's move to the next news the next news is regarding a particular bill that is digital competition bill we are at the draft level now so draft digital competition bill this art i'll give the background information regarding draft digital competition bill this article is talking about why the big technology companies they are opposing it and what is the reason behind it let's get into the discussion and let's see and what are these big tech companies like google companies these digital competition bill that affects these digital companies google amazon facebook instagram these are the digital companies they are going to be impacted with digital competition bill so let's talk about digital competition bill it is at the draft level and the 16 member committee has been constituted to come up with a digital competition law and they have given the draft and this draft is open for the public opinion now now you can uh, go to the website and you can give your opinion if you don't like any some of the uh, uh, prospectus or provisions of this particular law and what exactly this is going to deals with this is going to deal with anti competitive practices and this is going to ensure transparency and also it is going to curb the unfair favoritism in digital sector 
See the issue here is we need to have a fair competition in the digital world. Especially if you look at the online shopping, the two major they are the ruling the entire market here. One is uh, Flipkart and the second one is uh, Amazon. And even with respect to cabs, uh, the Ola and Uber they are having a, a duopoly there. And even with respect to food delivery, it's a Swiggy and Zomato. So there is kind of a uh, tussle that is going on between one or two companies only so this is not giving space to the new companies and it is getting difficult for new companies also to enter into the market so in order to make sure that digital uh, uh, the world or the digital competition is fair and uh, transparent and in order to make sure that competitive practices are respected and competitive practices are supported this particular uh, bill this is going to play a major role here and let's talk about important provisions of this particular bill there are two aspects you need to remember one is ssd ssd stands for systematically significant digital enterprises and the second one comes ade ade stands for associate digital enterprises here it is associate digital enterprises and systematically significant digital enterprises what are the systematically significant digital enterprises the same thing google uh, amazon whatever we had a discussion these are like very big digital enterprises if you look at it they have almost they are getting revenue around 4000 crores in india and globally if you look at their revenue they are more than 30 billion dollars every year and this is going to increase eventually down the line 10 years this is going to be around 300 or 400 billion dollars so these are these companies are very much significant there so it is very much necessary to control these company uh, by you know what these companies does is i'll let me give you give you an example systematic digital significant digital enterprise take an example of amazon amazon they have a shopping website here and amazon after a few years they started one mobile phone company also amazon mobiles and what amazon is going to do is they are going to support this uh, they are going to push this amazon mobiles whenever you search for mobile in amazon the first product that comes is the amazon mobiles only their company mobiles only they are going to come and they are going to come uh, give a lot of uh, discounts also and whenever the price comparisons happens or with respect to rating and all this is going to stand better and this is going to stand ahead when you compare to other companies so there is an advantage because amazon it is already established so the mobile company started by amazon amazon mobiles this is going to take advantage of already established market status of amazon so this is going to impact the new startups this is going to impact the new innovation and this is going to make the market unfair there is an advantage amazon is getting due to already establish their market situation so this act is going to make sure that these kind of significantly uh, systematically significant digital enterprise these kind of big big enterprises they follow the rules they do not take uh, things for granted and they uh, they do not go for anti-steering anti-steering is manipulating the user choices and they do not go for a self preferencing that is promoting their own products over competitors and also restricting third app third party application if some other samsung also uh, release the same mobile with the specific features but what amazon doing is amazon is pushing their own mobile phone rather than uh, samsung also but what exactly they have to do they have to give equal preference for the amazon mobiles also samsung mobiles also but they are not going to do that and they are not even doing now also in order to make sure that they go with rules and restrictions they are uh, unbiased they are neutral this digital competition law this is going to play a very important role here and i told you that this uh, systematically significant digital enterprises these are amazon and the amazon mobiles these are called as ade these are associate digital enterprises they are already big enterprise amazon is there they are associate digital enterprises they are affiliated companies these are called as associate digital enterprises see even there is an advantage for these kind of new companies also take an example of amazon mobile only see uh, uh, in amazon website almost you have a uh, address of a person a phone numbers of a person email of a uh, so many users are there so this amazon mobiles they, they are going to get this particular data and they are going to send email they are going to send messages or the letters sell, uh, telling that uh, buy are the mobile phones and prices uh, is that it means that they might use the already established databases already established user base and they push for their agenda 
but the computation bill this uh, uh, digital computation bill this is going to prevent this aspect also so this is going to affect the big enterprises and this is going to affect the associated enterprises also so all these aspects are going to be handled under digital computation bill and let's see the advantages of digital uh, computation bill it is going to increase the transparency so it it makes these uh, tech companies they are there should be more transparent and these operations to, should be open for uh, investigation or inquiries also so it increases transparencies and the second aspect is this is going to protect innovation this is going to protect the startups also and the third aspect is see it is not the india first company first country which is going for this kind of digital bill there are other countries especially european europe also they have one law that is european union digital market act and us also is coming up uh, similar law so already around the world even south korea japan they also have similar these kind of standards there so india is also aligning itself with the global standards with respect to digital markets so our standards is going to align with internationally regulatory frame frameworks with respect to digital market and finally this is going to boost the digital economy also see this is going to uh, if the transparency is more if you are supporting startups if you're supporting innovation then the new players are also going to enter the market as of now if you look at the situation even the small small websites are there like flipkart and amazon but they are not able to capture the market because these two big uh, big players they are controlling the entire market and it would be very difficult for a new company to make a space for itself out of these two so these kind of uh, 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 digital competition bills they are going to make sure everything is transparent and non biased this is going to boost uh, startup this is going to boost the digital economy and the local companies and uh, domestic small small companies can also compete in that environment so this is going to boost the india's digital market and there is expectations that by 2030 our digital market is going to reach around 800 billion dollars so india can take advantage of this particular economic growth also so these are the four positive aspects with respect to this particular bill but why the big tech companies they are opposing it see what they are telling it is if you make or if you create these kind of uh, uh, very strict rules it would be difficult for us to work in in those kind of situation and it is telling that around the world these kind of strict rules are increasing and it does not give our uh, give us freedom to work the way we want see we are also working for a, te a technology development only even google is telling that we we are coming up with new new options we are coming up with new services so but if these kind of uh, rules and re regulations applies on it this is going to impact our services also we cannot come up with a better services so in turn this is going to affect the digital market only so whatever you are doing it is going to affect the digital market negatively this is what they are telling and also that we already have a competition commission of of india and recently there was a issue where uh, from the google play some of the apps have been removed like matrimonial.com some of the naukri.com these applications have been removed from that at that point of time competition commission of india it has sent the notice to the google that why have you removed it and what is the re reason behind it after the after the notice given by competition commission of india they have to reinstall these applications in their platform so already we have a very what these companies are telling this already you have a competition commission of india that is going to take care of all these uh, if they, there is a bias is there if there is a non neutrality is there they can take care of it what is the necessity of one more law which is stricter compared to the already existing norms so this is going to affect impact the innovations so this is what their argument is but government is going to go through with a digital competition bill so this is what this article is talking about and let's see the previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2022 a uh, four entities have been given and you need to find which of the above are built on top of open source digital platform here the first one is arogya setu second is covin digilocker and diksha all the four are based on open source digital platform here and all the three all the four are correct 1 2 3 4 and this is it for the day guys this pdf is available in uh, netbook study telegram channel i would request you guys please suggest uh, please uh, subscribe netflix netbook study youtube channel and also this pdf is available in netbook study telegram channel also subscribe to the telegram channel also i'll see you guys tomorrow with current affairs and thank you for listening and have a good time